All right, how are you guys doing? I'll be talking about ethics and faith in the workplace and different things I touched on in my article or in my uh, paper and in my life. So let's get started. All right, so key points that I talk about within my paper is leadership styles. Is the styles of, of leadership ethical or unethical? Is it benefiting you or your coworkers? And a lot of times when we think of ethical leaders, we think, okay, they should have an ethical team. And such as unethical leaders, they probably will have unethical team. But a lot of these times, this doesn't really, you know, add up because ethical leaders could sometimes still have an unethical team. And this could probably be because they don't check in or they're not involved within their team. And I talk about how mental health plays a part and how different employees are burning out or they're just going through work overload because, you know, the the environment that they're in. Or they're just going through mental health because of the environment that they're in and they're and the trauma that they have. And a lot of the time, these leaders don't know that these things are going on. And their intentions are so pure. Their intentions are, are to be ethical, but they're just not checking in. So now you have workers that are not being able to complete the job the right way. And they're going through this. And now you have an unethical environment. And I also talk about passive leaders. A lot of passive leaders, which are, you know, people that avoid or... It's just try to dismiss or delay problems that rise at work or situations. And so a lot of these times, you know, these leaders, again, these styles don't work and it leads to unethical issues. So just looking at that within the leadership styles. Also, is your value worth the value? So are you in it for the money or for the right reasons? And I, I like that we watched the video not so long ago when it talked about responsibility and where God gives you responsibility and not just what you think benefits you. And, you know, leaders use incentives such as money, like promotions and bonuses to keep people in at the job, knowing that, you know, the labor or the quality of labor doesn't add up to the pay. And so people that only chase this money hunger or chase the money, a lot of times they go and do unethical decisions or they lead to different things that are unethical. And I was, I did this article, uh, not there, I was reading an article and I wrote about it. Um, it was about, you know, unethical decisions and how money plays a part. And it was two authors named Wang and Yang. And they say students with higher level of attraction towards money are more likely to be attracted to unethical decisions such as temptations. So, again, so are, is your responsibility, is it your responsibility or just the value of what you think your value should be? Right. And then faith in your workplace starts with action. And I'll talk about that more in the next slide. So what impacted me, the interviewees impacted me the most, the different interviews. And when I was going through the different interviews, a lot of the times they talked about their ethical issues. They all have gone through ethical issues and sometimes those are hard to change. But what they all said, and even you know integrating their faith within their workplace, but what they all said on how they would change it is through action, day by day. You know, Letting their actions follow biblical uh, scriptures or, or in line with God. And I always goes back to the word or, or the scripture that says faith without works is dead. You know, you can have all the faith you want within your work that things will change, that you can do the right thing or you can create things. But if you're not putting it to work, then it's truly dead. Right. So that that stuck with me the most. And also ethical issues in my field, such as dishonesty and all types of things like that. Um, you know, miscommunication with customers, money hungriness, um, how I attack that. So it led to, uh, you know, you know, ways to think about how I can attack that or it led to ideas. And then also just looking at, this is not just an assignment. This is reality of life. And I was doing these interviews. I was looking like, okay, you know, a lot of times when you do these assignments, you do it because, you know, you want to get a good grade or whatever the case may be. But when you're doing these interviews, you're looking like, man, this is actually really happening. You know what I mean? This is actually reality of life. And so, so, so taking that helped me know that, okay, these are the things that I will be facing later on. So the plan. So this is my specific plan. Nothing in complete order, but step by step, gain focus, not lose focus. And when I think about that, I think about um, I always when I go out through, throughout the day, I lose focus. So I feel like I have to complete everything all at once. Right. And a lot of times when I try to do that, I end up not completing anything at all. So if I have an agenda or a calendar, I can be able to you know do things step by step. And, and help me gain focus and, again, not lose focus. Set goals. Wherever I'm at in life, they should be realistic to my goals. 
not creating unrealistic goals or just imagination. You know what I mean? Just, and, and nothing's wrong with that. Having a little bit of faith, of course, but again, let them be realistic. And then as we're doing this paper, are they ethical with, you know, what I got going on? Are they benefiting me only or the people around me? Communication with God. If I had to rank all of them, this would definitely be number one. Um, prayer. Asking God for guidance every single day, not just the days of work or weekends or when I'm having a bad day. No, asking God is for guidance from God every single day so he can help me lead in the right direction. Help me be ethical. Help me be, you know, the right person for the people around me, my coworkers, my family. So that's very important for me. Create good habits. I always talk about in different discussions, the get rich fast, fast method. And, you know, when you're looking at this generation, this generation, you know, strives off that. And a lot of people are successful with that, but a lot of people are not. And I was always the one that was not successful with the get rich fast methods. And so that created a lot of stress. It created a, you know, bad mental health for me. And so, you know, learning those bad habits, you know, building off of that and creating good ones, observe and fix. And then take what I learned from this class, what I learned in Bethel, what I learned, you know, I transferred from Hamlin. So what I learned from Hamlin and within my education and applying that to every day. And not everything is positive. You know, I could take with the negative things that I need to learn and build off of that. And then also take what's positive and build off of that. So this is my oral presentation. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.